Good morning, everyone. Today we hear not just any story of Christ healing the blind, but we hear the first story in the gospel of Christ healing the blind in the form of the two men that seek him out today. Now, as I'm sure most of you know, due to the loss of their sense of sight, blind people will develop an enhancement of their other senses because they have to rely upon them more heavily to interpret the world around them. Blind people will often have a much stronger sense of hearing than the average person, or they will be able to utilize their sense of touch or smell to comprehend things that most people never could. Considering this, we could say that the two blind men in today's gospel had a much stronger sense of faith than most people. So while their physical eyes had been closed, their spiritual eyes were wide open when they came to be in the presence of Christ. <clears throat> now while faith is technically not one of the five basic senses, for us as Orthodox Christians, it is a very real sense because faith is indeed one of the ways we interpret the world and everything around us. The entire first paragraph of today's gospel is a testament to the faith of these two blind men. It says, as Jesus passed by, two blind men followed him crying aloud, have mercy on us, son of David. Right here, for two blind men to be able to recognize Jesus in their presence, despite not physically being able to see him, shows that they were spiritually very aware and alert. And not only do they follow him in the town, but they continue to follow him all the way into a house. It says, when he entered the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus said to them, do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, yes, Lord. So even after they follow and cry out to him, Christ does not immediately heal them. He tests their faith. And in this test, they persist. Without hesitating or second-guessing Christ, they immediately respond, yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it done to you, and their eyes were opened. And the final sign of their great faith and spirituality is perhaps the one that most of us can identify with, considering it's probably something we've done in our own lives. It says, Jesus sternly charged them, see that no one knows it. Now this was an early time in Jesus' ministry, and he was trying to keep a low profile, shall we say. So he asked these two newly healed men to not tell anyone about this. And what do they do? It says, they went away and spread his fame through all that district. This would be like someone telling you a secret of the best news you've ever heard in your life. The person who told you the good news asks you to keep it a secret, and you tell them, yeah, sure, I won't tell anyone. And what do you do? You turn around and tell all your friends, of course. So we see that these two formerly blind men so we see from these two formerly blind men what it looks like to have our spiritual eyes open. When our spiritual eyes are open, we are alert, like the men when they sought Jesus. When our spiritual eyes are open, we persist, like the two men did when Jesus tested them. And when our spiritual eyes are open, we are filled with joy and enthusiasm, just like the two men as they went and spread Jesus' fame through all the land. So now that we know what it's like to have our spiritual eyes open, let's consider what it is like when they are closed. Or in other words, what it is like to be spiritually blind. Unfortunately, this is not hard to picture, because this is the way most of the world is with a soul close to God, instead of, after chasing, instead of chasing after Jesus Christ, people chase so many other things 
to find meaning, to feel fulfilled. And what happens is, people with spiritual eyes closed open themselves up to some of the strangest things the world has to offer. And in extreme cases, everything good in a person's life can be lost in pursuit of anything and everything to bring them some kind of meaning. These are people you might know or see that we consider to be lost souls in the world. So while the two men in today's gospel were alert with spiritual eyes open, those who are spiritually blind slip into a state of obliviousness, wandering and searching for meaning in life. And while those with spiritual eyes open persevere and persist in all things, the spiritually blind are quick to defeat. How quickly one bad event can derail them. At the loss of a job, they'll think, my life is ruined. Coronavirus breaks out and they claim, see, there is no God. But those with an active faith endure all things. Some of the most inspiring examples of this faith and perseverance are a few priests that I have come across over the years that have suffered great losses or hardships, and yet they continue to serve as priests and give glory to God. There was one particular priest who used to serve at the seminary chapel from time to time. He's an old man who sadly lost his son in a terrible accident. And I would watch this elderly priest serve at the chapel and serve a Vespers or an, orth or an Ortho service. And not only would he serve these services, but he would serve them with every spiritual ounce of his being. And I remember thinking what great faith he had to have suffered such a loss and to continue to serve God with all his being. And the last difference between the spiritually seeing and the spiritually blind comes from the last act by the two men in today's gospel. When the newly healed men go off into town to sing the praises of Jesus Christ, they are giving thanks to God for the wonderful thing that has just happened to them. But those with spiritual eyes closed will likely thank only themselves for a great blessing or a great experience that has come upon them. But any of you who have received a great blessing and thank God for such a blessing know what true joy feels like. Joy in thanks to God is unlike anything else. In fact, the simple act of giving thanks to God in and of itself is an act that brings joy. Saint Minas was a soldier saint and held a very high office in the military. While I was in Cyprus on my seminary senior trip, we visited, we visited a monastery dedicated to Saint Minas. One of the nuns met with us to tell us the history of the monastery and the story of Saint Minas. And what I expected to be a grand tale of Saint Minas in battle as a warrior saint was actually quite a different story. Saint Minas was tortured to death for revealing himself to be a Christian. Saint Minas was tortured to death in many different brutal ways. The nun even told us about some of them. But the nun said in each of his torturings and brutal sufferings, Saint Minas gave thanks to God. He gave thanks. And the nun continued, so while many of us complain because it is too hot or too cold outside, Saint Minas gave thanks to God for the torturing he endured. Now, of course, this is an extreme example of giving thanks to God, but a reminder that there is power and joy to be had in simply giving thanks to God, something we are always able to do as long as our spiritual eyes are open. The simple point of today's gospel is that with faith 
our lives are simply better. The two men today endured and overcame a situation they otherwise could not have because they were men of great faith. When it comes down to it, this is what orthodoxy is all about. We believe in God and we connect with him spiritually. With this spiritual connection, with this faith, we are able to navigate the crazy world we live in. Not only does our faith help us navigate through difficulties, our faith is what enables us to overcome difficulties. This church has been closed for five months now. It has been five months since you walked through these doors and took your usual seat here in the church. And yet here you are, still connected, still tuning in to hear the hymns of the church, to participate in the prayers of the liturgy, and tuning in to hear a little bit about the gospel each Sunday. Yes, these are difficult times, but your faith has allowed you to endure it and will allow you to overcome it. With the eyes of your soul open, you are spiritually alert, you have the will to persevere, and you will do it all with joy in your heart, giving glory to God. Amen.